chickens, Thanksgiving is over and happy Thanksgiving to all of you who celebrated Thanksgiving. And in this video, we're going to be talking about proportions and one little trick cross multiplication that you need to know how to use and you need to just immediately think of it. Uh, knowing how to cross multiply and realizing that you can cross multiply could save you a lot of minutes on the SAT section. And if you already know how to cross multiply, feel free to skip that video. I'm not going to be offended. Uh, but I want you to in, um, check out the hard problem that we uh, created in regards with this uh, principle. It may not be super obvious that you can just cross multiply there. All right. Uh, who am I? My name is Katya Severson. My, uh, I'm the creator of the Severson method. It's a scientifically proven way to learn anything fast. This method applies to grammar. It applies to vocabulary. And of course, it applies to math. So let me teach you this principle using the Severson method. I would encourage you to create a mental image in your mind. So this is a typical proportion. Feel free to grab a piece of paper, just do any proportion. You can use letters, you can use um, numbers, whatever you guys want. Um, so a part over whole equals a part over whole, divided. And then let's get a little creative and let's picture in our minds what an atom looks like. Atom. Go small, small uh, physical structure Looks like this. What does this have to do with what I'm about to show you? I think that cross multiplication looks a lot like an atom because inside, instead of the, um, instead of the equal sign, you're going to have a multiplication sign. So in my head, it makes a lot of sense that you're going to have B times C equal to A times D. And that's exactly what a cross multiplication would give you. And here there's this little multiplication sign in between. And we actually employed cross multiplication when we talked about proportionality of circles. And uh, this is the little formula. Just a little reminder when you're setting up your proportion, one thing you have to be really careful of is this. If on the top, if on the top you have your parts, at the bottom you have your holes. So if this is an area of a slice, which is a part, you have to divide by the area of something that makes it a whole area of a circle. If you're taking a length of an arc, which is a part of a circumference, you have to divide it by what makes it a whole, which is a circumference. If you are if you are taking a part, which is a measure of the inner angle, you have to divide it by what makes it a whole, which is 360 degrees when it comes to a circle. Um, I hope this makes sense. And like I promised, we're going to make two videos, one simple problem, one harder problem. Uh, make sure you check out both of those so that you're prepared for the SAT. I'll see you in the next videos. Bye.